let's move on to topic number three. This comes from Box Office Fan. Deadline confirms Sony is working on a One Punch Man live action movie with Justin Lin. <laughs> One Punch Man is a manga anime with the gimmick that a, quote, hero at the end of his story who has all powered up starts full powered up at the start of his story by mistake. The result is a bored Superman powered hero who just wants a good fight and can't get one as he beats bad guys with One Punch. Scott Rosenberg and Jeff Pigner are scripting the film. If done right, this could be a fun film. Well, thanks so much for writing that in, Box Office Fan. Yes, One Punch Man, a fantastic manga series, a super, super fun anime following the antics of Satima, One Punch Man, coming to live action. Now, for me, this is always kind of a hit or miss thing, right? I love anime. That's how I cut my teeth in animation. I started out as a dub actor, which I know is very controversial for a lot of you diehard anime fans. If you want to do subs, you do subs. Not going to yuck your yum, even though it takes money away from me. <laughs> but this is a really great, fun concept. I really, really love the storytelling. And a lot of times, live action doesn't always do it justice. It's a little hit or miss. But let's first see what is going on with uh, this whole project. Let's go over to the folks at Screen Rant. Justin Lin, known for his work with the Fast and Furious franchise, is set to direct the live-action movie adaptation of the beloved manga and anime series One Punch Man. One Punch Man follows Satima, a superhero so strong he can defeat any enemy with just one punch. He seeks a worthy opponent as he has gotten bored defeating unchallenging foes in his fight against evil. The manga has been turned into the acclaimed anime series already and a video game, and now Satima is getting his own live-action movie. So a movie, not series, which is another thing that does give me a little pause personally. But at least now we know Justin Lin, he had to leave the Fast and Furious, not because of Vin, because he had to do this. I'm sure that's what happened. Rob, when you hear this, what do you think is going on with all this? First of all, <laughs> didn't they just announce a Netflix live-action anime, uh, anime series of this? Oh, they're doing uh, One, Piece. One Piece. Oh, oh, that's right. They're doing Which One that Piece. one, on, One Piece does look very <laughs> promising. I can't wait till we get to talk about that show more because they're doing like full and it's one. And it's, that's what I was, it's One Piece that has a thousand issues. Oh yeah, they, like they could. It, like, I still I, haven't finished that anime. Yeah, I don't you think could never. That's that what anime. I was thinking. You know, One Piece. No, I like One Punch Man. That here's 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 my thing. As a fan of Japanese animated properties. I think one of the reasons that people love them is because they're Japanese animation, that there is a sensibility that is happening in, you know, I remember I started reading manga uh, when Viz was bringing it to America and I was reading things like Area 88 and uh, Kamui and, and, and I loved all that stuff, mm -hmm. A Crying Freeman, uh, 2001 Nights, and I have all those Viz graphic novels, uh, Dirty Pair, and I loved all that stuff. And I was reading it because the sensibility is different than in the United States. And the first thing that anybody does when they bring these, whether it's, whether it's, um, um, uh, what do we, what, what do we just saw? Um, Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. You bring in Ghost in the Shell. It was cool, you know, but it was missing something. It was missing that certain, that non-Western thing that, yeah. that, that the, the sense you can't fake it. And I think the first thing that the first impulse when they bring, uh, when they adapt anime for, our world, our is that they remove the Asianness out Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Well, and, and with representation for being the first thing in there, you put Scarlett Johansson in that role of and, playing a Japanese character. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's I, that that didn't bother me as much as it's the sensibility behind the storytelling. Like the Japanese, the, they they anthropomorphize machines mm -hmm. far more than we do, and this idea that robotics and and this, that a machine could have a soul. All of that stuff is very, it, it, it's just different than how we would do it. And it feels different. And by missing that spark, it sort of takes something away from the property. Like One Punch Man has an absurdist idea behind it. It works. And in, in anime, it works really well. But I'm sure they're going to try and make it look more palatable to an American audience, an audience, a Western yeah. audience. And I worry that what makes the show delightful um, is something like the Japanese ness of the story? Absolutely, I completely understand that. You look at something too, like Cowboy Bebop's live action at, uh, adaptation, which you know there were a few things that weren't great about it, but I really enjoyed it because it kept a lot of that Japanese storytelling sensibility. There was a lot of the zaniness. There were a lot of things that were shot for shot 
things that we saw in the anime, which I really, really loved, and people did not like like it here. You know, it, it got bombed, it got critically just slammed, and I was really looking forward to a season two of that. But there's something that happens in the execution and translation of taking this so many times from animation to live action that it just feels like it usually falls flat. Guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Let me take a second to tell you why my wife, Anne, and I love HelloFresh. As two working professionals, at the end of the day, it can be tough to get dinner together. And HelloFresh saves us loads of time, money, and most importantly, gives us great tasting and nutritious meals. And no joke, with the easy to follow along instructions, Anne and I actually have a blast cooking dinner together. And they're so foolproof, even I can do it alone when Anne's not there. And HelloFresh now has over 30 dinner recipes to choose from every single week. That is the most choices of any meal kit out there. Customize your favorite dishes with new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. So guys, right now, go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia16 and use the code Campia 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Campia 16. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. I, I want to ask too, you know, we were talking before we got on the show about how vast the mangas are, right? It's a 26 volume series at the start. So for a show, for an anime show, we have a lot of material to work with. Yeah. When we are compressing something down into a film, do you think that's also going to hinder the story? I, I, know, I think it is. I mean, it's funny that I'm wearing an Akira t-shirt yeah. as we're having this, this conversation because, you know, you, know, you know, one of the interesting things about Akira is that the manga is vast. It is, I have the hardcovers of the original manga, the six volume hardcovers, and it's huge. The movie, the original 88 animated film is a distillation even though it was done, it was done by the original creator. It's a distillation of, of that manga, and I think the problem they've been trying to they've been trying to develop Akira here in, in the United States forever. They're just they they won't actually go back and adapt the manga or adapt the movie. They have to make it different. And when they're, they're well, it's going to be about gangs, you know, motorcycle gangs. We'll, we'll set it in uh, neo New York, you know, whatever, and make it, and they they can't make it work. You know, they can't make it work. And it's like, just adapt. Just go there. There's the story. It's all right there. But doing One Punch Man as a 90-minute to two-hour movie, I guess you could get away with it. But the very idea of having One Punch and making that work in our world here, I think that's a tough a tough order. It is. The, the odds, I feel, are stacked against them. But, Ray, you are a big One Punch Man fan. <laughs> yeah, You've got the, the T-shirts and everything. <laughs> How are you feeling about this? Are you, you know, excited? Are you nervous? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still waiting for season three of the anime. Mm -hmm. Like, we've been waiting a long time. So if it's anything like the wait for these seasons in anime, this movie's never going to come out. So, <laughs> I mean, they put it on a platform like Amazon. Ah, uh, it, it just says it just has bad news written. Do you all think over. that they could make a two-hour movie that would satisfy you as a fan? Yeah, but what I'm afraid of is it works as a series because, like, it's only like what twenty minutes each episode to draw it out into a two-hour movie. That sort of satire, where it's like, I, I admit, a, a lot of people find a, a One Punch Man boring. Right. And I, I I could see where they could get that feeling from just because he's like, so there's no motion in him. He's right. like, you know, which but I find that extremely funny just because of what the anime um, I'm used to compared to the uh, hero in One Punch Man. It's just so far different that I actually like it, but I could see how other people don't like it. So I don't think it'll work as a two hour movie. If you ask me, it won't. Live action and won't. It just won't. I don't. I don't know why. Oh man, Mr. Positivity <laughs> I'm very thing. I love no. One Punch Man, but I don't want to see it as a live action. It should stay. If anything, make it an anime movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Get Viz back because season two was. Sorry to everyone who worked on it, but the fight scenes weren't as good in season two because they switched companies. Um, I forgot what the first company was, mm -hmm. but yeah, they switched companies to another art house and, but. As long as they come out with season three, I'll be happy. But yeah. this, no. 
Wow. Well, and it's looking like that it's actually being developed for the big screen with Sony Pictures. So I was going to say, honestly, Amazon, when we were tinkering around with that being it, kind of made me feel a little more comfortable because we have things like The Boys, right? Mm -hmm. Where we've taken some concepts that are very, very odd and superhero based <laughs> oh. and made it work. But how do you feel about someone like Sony? Uncharted, right? baby. Uncharted. Okay. Well, they are a Japanese company. So, you know, maybe... Maybe we'll keep that sensibility. I, I will say this. When they say they they started production, if it's done like within like like two months or something, they didn't expect right. the worst. Well, and we're just in the development stages right now, yeah, too. So. But like you said it, here's the thing I, I wonder about. Do you said it in the real world? Yeah. Like like what world, what does the world look like? You know, you've got like in, in Tim Burton's Batman, it's an Anton first production designed kind of a nightmarish world. Mm -hmm. The MCU is relatively in our world. You know, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League and Man of Steel were more in a heightened Alex Ross painted reality. So what reality do you set this movie in? Is it in, is, is it, is that somebody just a dude? Yeah. Like, is he just a guy wandering around? Like, what is it? How do you do it? That's the best way to do you, it. You know, one of the things that um, I really liked about it was the fact that the world monsters walk around like they're normal people. Right. Like, around the corner, there's a monster there. And then the, they have like an Avengers Tower and like they have rankings. Right. And, and there's like an organization that uh, keeps track of all of them. And I just like that none of them know about this guy that is killing all the monsters that um, and they think it's one of the higher heroes because the higher heroes are there. See, that's what it. I mean. Yeah. If you did it like that, you know, and made it the stylized world where monsters are walking around, or do you go that realistic route? And I think a lot of that has to do with whether this is going to succeed or not. You don't, yeah. you don't see them as doing that both, like maybe just the re real. Oh, I would world, love look. And then you monsters know, walking around. You look like a, look at a movie like Free Guy. It's not the same thing, but you right. know, you're 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 looking at this video game world, and it was really well realized. Mm -hmm. It sets it up, and you buy into it. I think that's what makes One Punch Punch Man fun is that world. But is that world is that going to fly with a Western audience? Mm. Can you make people believe? Absolutely. And then are the creatures CG? Or is it is it practical? I mean, it's. Practical. I think it's a tough, tough call. Oh well, I love what the chat is pointing out. With Sony doing this though and developing this, we finally get the crossover that everyone wants: One Punch Man and Morbius. So at least there's that. Well, that would have made Morbius a better well movie. It would have made Morbius a way better movie. Because One Punch Man would have strolled in, taken him out with one punch, exactly. and we left. And we would have. Been, we would have ended in Act One where things were still yeah. promising. Oh, man. Well, the question is up for you guys. Are you excited about a One Punch Man live action film? Are you nervous? Do you think this isn't going to translate well? Let us know your spicy hot takes in the comments down below.